Okay, guys, thanks very much for your patience. So we're going to start today's webinar. So just like you know, we have got a tightly packed agenda, which involves an engaging interview, a live demonstration, and an interactive question and answer session towards the end. This part of the presentation should last around 30 minutes, and then we'll open the floor to, to answer your questions. You can ask a question um, by popping a question into, obviously, the question box on the right-hand side. And we'll be able to address them towards the, the latter part of the demonstration. So guys, just to sort of give you a bit of context, I'm, I'm genuinely excited to introduce my fellow speakers today. Um, our keynote speaker is Scott Weavers Wright. And Scott is the founder of the award-winning multi-channel business, kittycare.com. He's the former managing director of Morrisons.com General Merchandise. And Scott has moved into the digital investment game um, which a company called Hatch, who are involved with helping businesses start up. And he has a incubator um, that focuses on investments within the digital, retail, mobile, and social space. We also have Rory O'Connor, and Rory is the founder and CEO of Scurry. And Scurry is a, a single platform you can prepare and dispatch and track all of your ship shipments um, for your customers regardless of which carriers they use. And Rory has got extensive experience in the retail and telecoms sector as well. So in terms of what we hope to cover in today's webinar, we'd really like to take a look at some of those issues that you're facing coming up to the Christmas period. We'd also like to investigate the, the scurry integration with BrightPro and how that can help you increase efficiency particularly around your stock management and fulfillment procedures that, you, that you're currently going through. Then we're going to have, in the question and answer session, I, I really see this part taking place, is how to gain a competitive edge and be prepared for the upcoming Christmas season. Okay, so that leads us into the interview section. And we have Scott all the way, um, I think he's at a, a charity fundraiser at the minute, um, in, in a corner with poor mobile reception, but um, we, he's going to be able to answer your questions, um, but we like a challenge here uh, when we present uh, to a mass audience. So Scott, in terms of um, the, the questioning, could you really just share with the audience um, a little bit about who you are and, and your track history, especially with the, the Kitty Care Morrison's connection? Uh, sure, and uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and hope you can hear me okay at uh, the fundraiser in, in Dirty Horse Trials in, in Stamford, um, which is my hometown and uh, where Hatch is, is based. Um, a bit of background uh, from me. I left school at 16 with no qualifications, jumped into a computer dealership, which was my first retail experience, and spent two years on YTS at £35 a year, which I'm sure is a common um, a common journey and a common story. Um, and after two years of washing uh, my boss's car, um, I felt I could uh, do uh, that job better. And uh, I jumped into my first business at the age of 18 um, called 21st Century Computers. And off I went on my retail technology uh, story. Um, that lasted for about seven years, and it grew up to a couple of million turnover, and I became the, uh, I was the youngest employee of 21st Century, and um, I had about 20, 25 people, but ultimately failed because it ran out of cash, and um, it's a great lesson for me on my kiddie care experience, because effectively I was giving credit to very, very large uh, businesses who were buying very expensive uh, £5,000 computers, um, but the realities were when one or two of them decided to pay me uh, on 90 days rather than their usual you know, 21, 30 days, I couldn't, um, I couldn't ride uh, that kind of cash flow shortage, and um, I lost my business, which was a really humbling experience. Um, and they say uh, failure is a big deal. I you know, now class failure as an event and not a person, and um, it certainly woke me up to the problems of, of business. Um, and my first lesson was not never to give credit, which is something I think we all have to deal with and get over uh, nowadays. But online in particular, 
it was a lesson I brought into kiddie care. So when we put kiddie care online in 1999, um, clearly we, we weren't going to give credit because people were ordering with credit cards. So I was very comfortable um, in that space. I was also very comfortable in 1999 um, playing in a tech digital retail space that was very new and very, um, well, it was the start of a journey um, for the UK and for the world in respect of online e-commerce uh, and multi-channel and omni-channel as we all call it and we refer to it nowadays. But uh, very early doors and I still remember uh, the first order for Kitty Care and the last order was um, one of 17,000 items a day and the first order was a McLaren pushchair. Um, so it was a very long time ago now, 1999, 14, 15 years ago, um, so a long time ago. So, so with that, I mean, in terms of, of um, the kitty care aspect, um, and, and you grew that really from, from 1999 to, to the sale in, was it 2011? Yes. So, how did how did that how did that seal come about in terms of what what did um, what did Morrison's really admire about the the kitty care you know approach to business and the reason behind their acquisition? Well, we built the technology um, around the customer, and you know I, I make no bones. We obviously made a very efficient solution for us, but the realities were it was all about the customer. Um, and we built a platform, and we weren't afraid to read platforms. So if you go back to the early days, like us all, we had to start somewhere, and we started with a very simple solution, and effectively um, that allowed us to take orders, and we plugged the payment gateway in, and we had a very basic inventory solution. And in 1999, we had no inventory stock control, or no ERP picking systems, and, and, and you know, very sexy cloud-based accounting systems. So it was very rudimentary. Um, and very quickly we found out as orders grew and as our requirements grew internally that we needed a better system. And we actually re-platformed five times before 1999 in new technologies. And we weren't afraid to do that. Most businesses are. Most businesses lock down um, and don't change what they have and kind of work around them. We very quickly, once we got to the edge and the tipping point of a solution, we kind of said, I tell you what, we're going to either hang on here and try and make it work, or we can actually go up one level or two levels and actually move forward and really benefit the business later downstream. Not now. We accepted now was where we were, but can we downstream in two years' time be ahead of our competitors because we were brave enough to change the technology? So in 19... Um, where are we? So around about 2004, I re-platformed to IBM. A very, very, very big decision for a small independent retailer. And um, IBM WebSphere was very expensive. But, you know, the gamble was I wanted to bring dev in-house. I wanted to have a flexibility with a platform that I could actually in, in control in-house. Not just my web but my stock control and accounting systems and my search solutions, search solutions online. So it was a very, very big decision. And I took that decision and integrated the IBM and Microsoft product called Microsoft Indivision and a search solution called Indeca, which um, we were the first people to use in Europe was a state science solution. And we integrated those solutions. And we were very brave to do so. But again, you've got to be brave, particularly in tech, because if you can be different, and you can produce something which is different from your competitors, very Amazon-ish, if you like. You have their flexibilities. You can make, you can make an awful, awful um, competitive advantage. Uh, and it's something I like about Scurry, because what I did in 14, 15 years at Kitty Care um, was produce a system which went from a daybook scenario. So if you think, I started, I, I came into Kitty Care in 1999, and the, the business was a, a brilliant little business, a corner shop selling um, cots and cot beds and push chairs, doing a million turnover, maybe a couple of million turnover, and we took it to 45. But when I joined the business, it had no accounting systems. We had no inventory systems. Our tills were cash tills, therefore we had no barcodes. We had no BI or what we used to, which is a sexy term for reporting, business intelligence. So we had none of those, none of the basics. And over the course of five platforms, we, we put in our accounts, we put in our BI, we put in our web solutions. 
we put in our warehouse management solutions as we grew. And it got to a point about 2004 and I said, where I said, can we gamble here? You know, can we say, we're doing 10 million and we're doing 15 million. Can we assume a lot of hard work, we can go to 50 to 50 million? And what I was really saying there was the exit opportunity. Am I with a platform? Do I have enough solutions to take me to 50? Because if I, have, if I go to 30 or 40, can a buyer, when I exit the business, be very comfortable about my IT setup from a due diligence point of view? I knew one day, even though it was a family business, that we were going to exit that business. And therefore, what I didn't want was to have a conversation with a buyer to say, actually, you're not using the right technology. Because you can't sell the business and devalue the business. Clearly, if you have a competitive advantage by having the right solutions, and in my case, in those days, we had in-house debt, I was very nimble, and we could do things very quickly. So we could add third-party solutions to the solution very easy. So our community was added. Our Q&A solutions were added. Our review systems were added. And they were simply plugged into the solution. They were third party. I didn't have to, you know, I didn't dev them, didn't create them in-house, but I could add them in very, very quickly. So we needed a platform. In this case for us, it was IBM, and it was a very, very nimble solution. Um, that enabled um, Kitty Care to start picking up awards. Kitty Care clearly had a mantra about looking after their customers. We put our customers first in every single respect. And the technology allowed us to do so. So when we wanted to do next day delivery, we went with a courier um, called DPD who enabled that. We encouraged DPD to look at text messaging. We started text messaging our customers initially by saying the goods are out for delivery. And we encouraged DPD and we helped them progress with reference to uh, their predict service, which was an hour delivery service. So we started to use the technology to enable the business to do great customer service. So rather than eat customers emailing uh, Kitty Care, we used to have them go through the community first and then email effectively with the community and say, I'm not happy, what are you going to do about it? And of course, because that was in the public domain on a great community solution and tech we found, we, uh, we basically had this conversation in the public about the customer not being happy, so other customers saw it. And of course, we answered that and said we'll get it right, and we were very brave to do that because not very many customers, um, businesses allow their customers to say I'm unhappy on the community. Well, they all want it in an in internal email. But we allowed it on the community, and what that did was allow our service managers and our shop floor managers and our dispatch managers and you know ex manager to look at the community and see what kind of problems were being created because we weren't doing our job right. So we used technology to transform the business and to become a very efficient shipper of goods, a brilliant friend of the customers and obviously our suppliers. And we really pushed the technology from, from into, into areas that was very exciting. You know, our call center was plugged into our, our solution so customers basically rang up and we knew who they were. We offered them a ringback service so if they were in a queue of over five minutes, they said, hey, don't worry about this, give us your phone number and we'll ring you back or you ring back in 20 minutes and we'll put you in front of the queue. So we were a completely focused, customer-driven company because that's what you have to be, of course. Scott, it's Kieran here. So Scott, in terms of, of that, a lot of passion and, and, and love of technology and, and improving process you know, that came across and, and what you've just said, is that, is that why you decided to move into the you know, digital investment uh, and, and start up an incubator? Was that part of the the love and trying to trying to replicate the success with other people was that your driver? Well, what I saw at um, at Kitty Care were uh, a lot of startups, um, and we supported a lot of start startups coming from San Francisco, uh, New York, and, and and London. And they were very very difficult for um, it's very difficult for startups to get into a big company like Kitty Care or Morrison's or in any 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 top retailer. Very very difficult indeed. And we weren't shy of supporting startups four or five of our external relationships with technology were all startups out of the West Coast. So we, we really, really pioneered it and enjoyed working with them. When it came to Hatch, it was a very simple solution. You know, we, we, our experience in a very big retailer such as Morrison's is that Morrison's doesn't innovate. 
It can't. It's too big. It has to do its day job, which, and, it, and its day job makes its bread and butter. They very, very um, rarely in, 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 innovate. They follow. But of course, we're not. We're, we're, we're very much innovators, and we, we love innovation because it, it, what it can do. So Hatch supports you know, young startups who have come up with a great piece of technology, and, a, and I help, along with my team, um, to basically find, uh, a, not a niche for them um, as such, but basically a, a we work with them and try and advise them uh, on what doors um, they should go through and uh, not to make basic mistakes. Excellent, excellent, Scott. Thank, thanks so much for for that um, insight into how you get into into the investment game. Um, so, so moving it, moving the focus um, around to the the retail um, that uh, the, obviously the business that you ran. What, what what were the biggest issues would you say that you faced? You know, in the run up to this busy holiday period, and, and how did you cope with that that seasonality in in kitty care? Um. So. I think it's fair to say we had expandable walls. You know, we I, I was very um, well, blase is a very poor word, but I was very keen to have the right stock at the right time. And if that meant we needed expandable walls and we moved stock around and we broke a couple of rules about having the right stock in the right locations, then that's what we did. Um, so. Uh, what I mean by that is that we basically overordered. So every year as we grew, even with our big warehouse, which is a you know quarter of a million square foot at the end, and we have to remember we came from 5,000 square foot to a quarter of a million. So we, you know, I've been on that journey. Um, even at the end, we 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 were very um, astute, and we ordered the right amount of stock, uh, or we, we 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 ordered the stock that we needed or felt we needed. Or we gambled that we needed because it's a crystal ball. Um, and we then let the technology um, make it efficient. So what I mean by that is we obviously had a, a store, and we obviously had a web. The store was uh, run by kiosks, the customers ordered on kiosks, and uh, effectively we were very clever in, in respect of how, we, um, of how we put our stock together. So as you, as stock came into the warehouse, it automatically went on the kiosk, automatically went online. So we, 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 it got quite efficient in respect of um, those big quarters where we needed to do needed to do some you know, serious volume. So basically, when we ran out of stock, it automatically said to the buyers, "We're out of stock. Do you want to place an order?" If they placed the purchase order, it put it back online. So if we ran out of our best selling stock in quarter four, which is obviously a huge sin, um, the realities were we could place an order. Let's hope and assume the supplier has stock and then get it to us quite quickly. And then we were very efficient. The system automatically said, "Let's put it on pre-order for the customer. Give it a give it a, a delivery date a week after we were due to get it in. And when it came in, it automatically created picks for the, uh, the the warehouse guys. So it actually didn't hit the warehouse shelving. It just simply went straight back out. So we were very um, um, we I think I think we were very brave to have expandable walls uh, and have the right stock." And then we use the technology to make it uh, efficient. If we got the wrong stock, or we had less, less we, we didn't get the right stock in respect to volumes, we, we we could cater for that scenario as well. That's excellent. So it was almost a really efficient throughput. Um, you know, so the stock didn't stand the shelves too long. It, as it came in, it, it went out. So you're almost lean, and you got to a very lean um, style setup uh, in, in, in Keddie Care. I mean, oh, we did, we did. So, a good example. We did, we did, we didn't have people to put stock online. You know, we initially created the skew, and obviously, clearly, you initially create the skew and the content. But thereafter, stock inventory controlled um, stock being listed or not. And and so, you mean so you overcome challenges with you know uh, systems, process, you know people. It seems like you took a lot of risks in terms of. You know, being the first people to sort of adopt these new, uh, new strategies. So, if you were, if you were to do it all again, um, and you were, you know, experiencing your first Christmas, maybe your second Christmas, what what tips, Scott, would you give? You know, what the top three maybe that you give to a sort of a new or you know, a, a two to three years in business um, retailer? What what advice would you give them now if you could do it all over again? Well, I would be excited. I would be excited if I if, if I was to do it all over again, because technology has changed. The cloud has changed dramatically. The um, requirement to have 
a very heavy on-premise. On-premise in English means um, uh, you host it in your own data center and, uh, and you control your own uh, solution with dedicated servers, which is a private cloud. I think today um, the, cl the public cloud and, and, um, and platforms and e-commerce platforms that are, are available uh, uh, makes it a very exciting uh, space to be in. Um, we had a solution which we controlled ourselves and, and ran the maintenance for ourselves, and that was something which was very painful and very expensive. There was no need to do that now with the SaaS solutions. Um, I had one courier, which was DPD, and all the way from that we had them for about 10 years, and we grew to their second largest customer. We were the largest before Amazon joined, the, joined, joined DPD. But the reality was we had a great relationship with them. Um, but it, I wouldn't do that again. I would have a multi-courier solution. You know, you know, clearly. You know, obviously, I, I'm a um, I'm, I'm a big fan of of, of Scurry um, because it's a cloud based multi-courier solution. And it was something that if you sit back and start again, you know, I would have a SaaS based e-commerce solution. You know, tick box. Looking at my, and I would have a very good one. I would, I would have a one that would would uh, work for me as a customer, work from a scale point of view, you know, can it handle one order or can it handle, handle, handle a thousand orders an hour. I would work with a delivery partner in respect to a middleware such as Scurry, where I can say, I tell you what, I don't have to have one courier, because one courier suited me. It was next day delivery, thanks very much, great. But the reality is, well, that was quite expensive, and I didn't have much of a choice. The customer was happy, but not always, because sometimes they they wanted a different solution, and I wasn't willing to offer that because the integration hassle um, of bringing that into our platform. So I'll be quite excited now because I've got a SaaS solution in the middle, so I don't have to pay all this money to not to IBM. I've got crew, I've got solutions such as Scurry and a review solutions and X solutions, which are all in the cloud. And I can plug in from APIs, and really, quite honestly, I can have some fun because the big boys can't compete; they just can't. You know, look at Marks and Spencer's, you look at Sainsbury's, you look at Waitrose, they've all got very, very hefty stuff. And even even in the middle tier and the bottom tier um, businesses, you know, you know, if I say bottom tier, you know, five million, two, you know, the two millions, the you know, hundred thousands, they have great flexibility, amazing flexibility and get things done really quickly. Where the big boys can't and the competitors can't, not even Amazon. So I'd be very excited now with the technology that's available. That is, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, with I mean, the passion clearly comes across, um, and, and the results you know speak for themselves in terms of your your fantastic career to date, and the, the very fact that you're taking all of your learnings and, and moving forward with Hatch, um, and, and helping other retailers and, and, and young businesses you know realize their passion. I think it's a very very honourable thing. So thanks very much, Scott, for for coming on the webinar today and, and sharing those those pearls of wisdom, and I know. You know, me personally, I've learned quite a, quite a few things, and I think you've re reignited a passion for for for, for technology in, in a lot of us. So, thanks very much, Scott, um, for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so guys, with with the next part of the webinar, we're going to be taking a look at you know how the Bright Pearl and Scurry integration can help you efficiently run your business and, and really in the backdrop of what Scott's just said, you know, having that, you know, lean approach when it comes to stock, you know, having those efficient processes and really building a, a, a solution that can, you know, have a solid uh, back end business management platform, but also reach out into other applications and really form that platform approach to, to run in your business. So for our customers on the call, welcome. Um, for the uninitiated amongst you, um, Bright Pearl is a multi-channel retail management system. Um, so we help independent retailers like you uh, manage the heart of their business by bringing orders, inventory, customer data, accounting, and reporting all into one place. Um, we are dedicated to the small to medium space because we hope that independent retailers like you will one day be the the, the John Lewis, the House of Frasers, the Kitty Cares, and Morrisons of the future. So, as you know, when order volume increases, it's important to have tools and processes in place to help you manage those busy periods. As Scott explained, you know, sometimes it's manpower is not enough to, to compensate for for systems and processes that that haven't been to de designed to scale. That's why he took the decision to to implement, you know, IBM WebSphere. 
So smart, dynamic, and ambitious retailers like you know that you know good systems and processes are fundamental and, and key to, to growing a business. So it's also about the people though as well, and uh, the people that use these systems and the people that also can benefit from them. And by that I mean the customer service element and ultimately the end customer. So in terms of systems and processes, BriPro we believe heavily in automation and gaining efficiencies. So that's why we we built uh, BriPro to help automate many of the time-consuming yet essential tasks that you need to do to run your company. And this is really key to scale. Um, it's very hard to scale an inefficient and broken system. But once the, you take the effort to automate these processes into a single system with you know, a reach out with APIs into to other systems, you can really see the throughput of your organization start to skyrocket. I mean, we heard Scott mention that the turnover, uh, the revenues that he got um, went from you know, in, in the millions to actually to 45 million in, in the end. So this, this really happens, this sort of explosion or skyrocket happens because you'll be spending less time on administration and more time on the, on the growth aspects and expanding your business, uh, providing better customer service, and growing, growing profitably and comfortably, so not being overexposed uh, when it comes to, to holding too much stock. So a platform like BriPro uh, and Scurry can help connect your external channels and internal systems with each other. Um, and with those systems that also face your customer. So nothing is lost when you implement a back-end system and there's no re-entry of data. Everything is connected and pulled together so you can actually start to uh, experience extraordinary efficiencies um, that actually result in less effort. So the diagram you see in front of you guys, we, we affectionately refer to it in-house as the orange cream donut. Um, but it, it is a lot, a lot more powerful than an orange cream donut, I assure you. Um, with with, with Pearl, you can experience um, seamless inventory synchronization between channels. So especially when the run up to Christmas, and you may be selling on eBay and Amazon and your website. Um, I've spoken to retailers who, who, who do this manually. You have to update separate systems. And really what, what a system like BriarPill can do is allow you to connect all of your channels and seamlessly update all of your inventory across all channels. And I'll show you a little bit about that in the demo. Um, when you connect this with purchasing, so really stock and inventory starts with purchasing. As Scott said, he, it would barely spend any time in the warehouse when received. So BriarPill has got a connected, integrated purchase order system. And it can actually present your inventory online the minute it is booked into inventory the minute you actually receive it into your warehouse. We also passionately believe in order processing at BriPro. So whenever those orders come in, they have to be processed in an efficient way that you can actually scale. So you might start off with 10 orders a day, 50 orders, 100 orders, moving all the way up to 500 orders and 1,000 orders. So you're really going to need a central hub for efficiently processing orders regardless of the channel in which they come in on. Um, and let's not forget, you have to communicate with your customers in such a way where you don't have to constantly be answering the phone to update the status of, of the order. So you really want a system to take care of a part of the customer facing element so you can get on to the things that you enjoy doing, which is sourcing new products and actually you know, growing your business. So for the customers amongst us, the customers of BrightPro, um, you know that integrating accounting actually helps with these time savings as well. So BrightPro has uh, truly integrated accounts. So this means that you can remove a lot of the effort when it comes to bookkeeping. And more importantly, you can get an insight into how well certain products are performing, um, how much you need to buy of something uh, in terms uh, to meet demand. And this really helps you be efficient when you get ready for those Christmas orders um, that will really test, uh, test your processes. So, Guys, what I'd like to do is go in and show you really end to end. I don't want to spend too much time in, in BriPro. For those of you who want to investigate BriPro a little further, please feel free to, to um, pose a, a question to my um, email address or my Twitter, uh, which are, I'll give you at the end of the presentation. Um, but what I'd like to really do is just step in and talk a little bit about how that order can start with a customer and then end up with that package uh, delivered by the right courier at the right time the right location. So um, Bright Pearl, as you can see in front of you, is fully cloud-based, and this was partly one of the reasons why we chose to integrate with Scurry. 
because they're a cloud-based platform as well. And we found that their technology was really, really complementary to our open approach to, to API. So whenever it comes into uh, the recent sales screen, guys, so this is where I talked about all of the different orders coming in from all of your individual sales channels. So you can see there that I've got the website, eBay connected, and Amazon connected. This means you no longer have to log into the back end of your system, any other system, and significantly reduces the time spent on admin. And this means that your staff can have one system and have a familiar um, interface, really, to go about their day job. They don't want to be hopping from system to system to try and update, update stock. Um, with with the, the single hub, you can then start to process your shipments and start to create goods notes. And those good notes can be branded um, to the channel that you're actually sending the goods to, or sorry, that the goods, the order came from. So if it's an Amazon order, you may want to brand your goods note differently. If it's eBay or if it's Magento, you might want to take that more personal approach when it comes to, to sending that order. So what we'll do, guys, we'll go on to our shopping cart really quickly. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we have an item in our shopping cart. So this could be a typical experience for, for a user. So this one user is called Chris Kringle. And Chris is going to check out, um, he's buying a pair of board shorts, which is maybe not appropriate for Christmas, but maybe he's going off on holidays because even Santa Claus needs a break once in a while. So what we can see that Chris lives at 100 Tinsel Boulevard in London. And I'll show you how this information is important because what you want is a closed loop system. And by that I mean whatever address the, the customer enters you want to really send that right through to your warehouse and minimize the amount of steps between the customer and that box arriving at, at their front door. So we're going to quickly put, place an order into, into Brightcrow. Um, so we'll finish the order off in Magento and we'll go ahead and place that order. So this information is really important and the shipping method is also important. And we'll take a look at how the shipping methods such as maybe uh, Yodel or Royal Mail that actually comes into to Pro and helps the warehouse staff filter based on the type of uh, shipping method that was chosen. So it might be Parcel Force 24 or Parcel Force 48. It also lets them determine uh, what the um, single line orders are. So for example, those one-off purchases that you want to maybe put to the, to the top of the deck. And it also allows you to really get a, get a sense of where you're at in the process. So what I'd like to show you guys is the order coming into BrightPro and that order being sent to the warehouse. So we'll go ahead and hit download. And so BrightPro will actually uh, contact the e-commerce platforms and marketplaces for you. So these will automatically download into your back end. So there's no need. This is just for demonstration purposes. So as you can see that Chris Kringle's order has come in. Uh, so Chris works for Lapland Enterprises. And he has indeed, has also brought down the Magento tracking number. So this really helps from a customer service aspect if anyone rings to, to query about their order. The stock's automatically allocated, so you don't have to have someone manually allocating stock. And the very simple act of allocating stock automatically means that you reduce the risk of double selling or over committing on your stock, which means that you'll have less disgruntled customers uh, coming up to Christmas, and you'll be able to fulfill only the orders that have been received, so you'll not leave anyone disappointed. You're probably thinking, well, what, how does BrightPearl help me in terms of batch processing? I receive 300 orders a day. I maybe spike at 600 orders at Christmas. So how is BrightPearl going to help me uh, manage these? And the answer is very, very simple. We've built batch processes into BrightPearl. In fact, it's a thread that runs through BrightPearl in terms of being able to do many actions with essentially one or two clicks. So in this example, what I'd like to show you is how we can actually fulfill many um, shipments at once or push them out to a warehouse at once. And because we integrate seamlessly with the channel, you can actually inherit the shipping method from the sale. So that means someone it takes the guesswork out of someone choosing which which shipping method goes with which order. That means you can get that you're sure that it's going out with the right uh, courier and provider. And well, Scurry will talk more about that in a sec. So we'll quickly go ahead and fulfill. And what this will do is produce these goods notes that will arrive into our warehouse manager screen. So if we go ahead over to the warehouse manager screen, do a quick refresh, and we'll see that the following orders have now populated into our warehouse manager screen. You'll also see that it actually inherited the shipping method from the, the sales orders. And this allows us to clearly at a glance see that actually we've got a lot of DHL Express easies, 
and they actually have to be out by 9 a.m. the following morning. So for a warehouse manager, this is key information to help him determine which order he should process at which time. In Browpool, you can now print um, uh, actually up to 500 um, goods notes at one time. So it really starts to lift the ceiling on the amount of orders that you can process at one time. So that was released in 4.73, the version that I'm uh, demonstrating in a minute. And that also complements the existing features. So printing goods notes, goods notes out in bulk, picking or producing a consolidated pick list, which stops, saves you a lot of time in the warehouse. And a consolidated pick list will essentially combine all of the items that you need to pack into individual orders, and it will produce a consolidated list. So your, whoever's working in the warehouse can take this list along with the location, and they can print out the, the, the shipments, uh, staple them together, and go out and pick in one run instead of multiple runs. So you're actually able to have this packing bay approach and pack at the packing bay rather than, than pack as you go. So once, once they're all packed up, guys, you can actually go ahead and then ship them out the door. Um, so this is where, I mean, Scurry does come in. And we, we chose to partner with Scurry for a, for a number of reasons. Number one, their technology is absolutely amazing. Um, they really are a trendsetter in the multi-carrier field. Um, but also because they had a really good approach to the small to medium retail space. And they really appreciated that where Brightpearl was efficient in terms of inventory and fulfillment, Scurry really took it to another level when it comes to choosing the right courier, um, the, right, uh, the right shipping method for the right location based on weight and value. So they really built this rules-based approach to help our um, customers become even more efficient. And this lends itself to our app store approach, which we're constantly refining and building um, apps into our app store. And Scurry is very much a large part of our fulfillment strategy and they will be for, for time to come. Um, but we also have, have closed the gaps in terms of auto fulfillment and also you know, auto, auto uh, shipment as well. So there's things that you can actually do in Brightpool that actually makes the whole process automated from, from the order being placed to the order being shipped. Okay, Rory, I'll probably overstay my welcome. Um, so guys, I'd like to, I hope that's been informative in terms of why we chose Scurry and the efficiencies that you can drive from choosing a, you know, a platform like Burl Brightpearl that integrates with Scurry. So I'll hand you over to Rory O'Connor, who's the CEO and founder of Scurry. Uh, thanks, Kieran. Thanks very much for uh, those kind words. And uh, it's great to have Scott on and getting his uh, perspective on retail and the vast experience that he has uh, had in this particular area, growing from a very small uh, corner shop company to a uh, dramatic uh, uh, player in the um, in, in, in a niche segment, and I suppose that the majority of customers that we deal with uh, are looking to get into that uh, scenario of being an enterprise customer, and this is where Scurry um, allows the customers that we deal with and the clients we deal with to scale. So one of the reasons that we um, suppose partner with Bright Pearl from the very beginning as we saw that uh, for retailers looking to grow um, and people who are in that growth phase that uh, the solution certainly fills a gap in the market and brings them up to that enterprise level. Um, we certainly saw from Kieran the, and the wider team that the team was easy to work with and I suppose most importantly from our point of view was that the product had a shared vision about a number of things. About you know how pro how product should be built, how it should be easy for the uh, customer to use uh, our, our products, and how that should actually give a uh, competitive advantage to our clients to bring them to the to the next level. So really, the team and the product team had a shared vision as to how um, we could help retailers get to where they want where they want to be. Um, Kieran, perhaps if you can flip me on to the next slide, be great. The essence behind Scurry really is, is we are a delivery management solution, as, as Scott mentioned, and we're a cloud-based delivery management solution. So that brings with it, we think, a huge amount of, uh, of competitive advantage for uh, people who are using Scurry. Uh, the first 
point, I suppose, really, is that it's very simple to use. Um, and behind it, there's a lot of complexity, but we make that complexity simple. So it's simple to add carriers, so integrating and maintaining your major carriers allows you as a merchant to free up any valuable IT resources that you may have, or if you're contracting them, it reduces the, the, the cost of doing that. It's very simple to deploy. So in terms of an integration with Bright Power, we're integrated in with Bright Power. Uh, it's a very simple connection um, from the point of view of getting up and running. And uh, if you don't have, if you have any other type of a uh, uh, connection that you want to connect in, our API is, it is very easy to pull in our other um, channels into the, um, into the system. It's also very simple to use. So we put a lot of work into the user interface, much like Bright Pearl to allow you to very quickly to be able to manage your orders and get them dispatched and out, out the door. The second thing, I suppose, is the scalability. And for merchants of uh, this size, really, you're looking, as Scott really alluded to, is we have the technology to allow you to scale. And that's what Scurry allows. It gives you access to a wide variety of carriers. And I think Scott mentioned about the fact that it was difficult uh, because of the cost of integration, perhaps, to try other carriers. Well, this allows you to have a multi-carrier solution. And as we all know, perhaps the one carrier is not, is not in the, able to give you the type of service that you want, maybe for international, or if, you've, uh, you know, if you're shipping surfboards and they're a different size product, that's uh, the carrier that may do your board charts is not as good at doing the, um, the surfboards. You might need to have two different carriers. And uh, Scurry allows you to do that. Um, scalability in terms of operational efficiency, so as you grow in, in terms of a company, things that you were able to do previously and throw probably manpower at it becomes harder and harder to do. So elimination, duplication, elimination of repetitive workflows and getting rid of errors in order to maximize operational efficiency, that's uh, really uh, an important aspect of growing a business. And Scurry helps by reducing those uh, those uh, repetitive workflows. And also, I suppose, scaling for growth. And um, I think Scott alluded a lot to this, but future-proofing your, your, your business, and particularly with us, and future-proofing your delivery capability, so you can swap carriers quickly if you need to. If you want, you can add in new carriers. You can test new carriers without having to worry and have the headache of having a massive implementation every time. And we say then, uh, you know, we could talk about service, and we think service is important. And again, it, it, it probably cross-references with a point that Scott had about, you know, if you're treating your customer right, um, that the, the business comes. And, you know, we have uh, SLAs in, in, in place to ensure that uh, the promise, the delivery promise is delivered, that our system is up and uh, is running at all times. We get the uh, feedback from the carriers and make the changes to the system uh, immediately so that you, you keep you up and running. And we have an MPS score of uh, at 9.33 at our last calculation, which out of 10 is, you know, an extremely high uh, score for a net promoter score. Um, we use service um, in terms of having a very um, competent and expert uh, in-house team, so we don't outsource our uh, development. We have a very um, well-experienced um, experts and technical team who are able to solve problems immediately and develop and innovate the product. There are the three points that um, the Scurry solution really uh, we, we, we focus on. And the backbone of that, and if you can bring us on to the next uh, slide, uh, Kieran, is the carriers. And for retailers having the access to multi-carriers, uh, multiple carriers is uh, for modern retailing is really important. So if you're shipping internationally, you may want to have a UPS or a, a DHL uh, option. You might be using Yodel and uh, Hermes for maybe your domestic and uh, perhaps DPD um, for maybe some European shipping. And something like Scurry allows you to do that because you don't have to worry about the integration. You can work, it, you spend your time almost like Kieran said about Bright Power allowing you to spend time uh, work, focusing on your business. You can spend your time working out, well, what are the best carriers, what are the best services within those carriers that I need to service my customers, rather than having worrying about the headache of integrating them and actually getting them actually up and running from a technical point of view, because you literally plug into us once and we have these carriers available to turn, to turn on. 
And perhaps if you can click on to the next um, uh, screen there, Kieran. So, and how does that work? And it, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, Kieran really brought you to the stages of the order being created and the goods out note um, being created. And at the point of creating the goods out note, it's automatically imported into the scurry through our, our connection and uh, the API that we have uh, with the Bright Pearl system. We run a set of shipping rules which can complement or can be uh, even more um, sophisticated than the rules that are available in Bright Pearl. So based on weight or various other attributes, we can um, do things, allocate to different carriers and different services. The labels are then printed within Scurry, and if you uh, have customs documentation, say in the case of Royal Mail, if you need a CN22 or 23, um, they're created in addition. Um, it's pushed back into Brightburn in terms of updating the goods out note at that point uh, with a tracking number and the carrier service so that you can communicate back to your customer or the customer service personnel have availability of, uh, and visibility of what's happening. Uh, and finally, we generate a, a scurry manifest which uh, kicks off the man manifesting process with the, uh, with the carrier. Of course, the, then the carrier comes and collects the goods after getting the details uh, being transmitted to them automatically from ourselves. So this is part of creating the seamless experience of order to delivery. Um, so when the customer puts in their details at the very beginning, uh, on, in Magento, Bright Pearl pulling it through to their own system, checking for stock, bring it in, into Scurry, where Scurry then gets the appropriate carrier and tracks it right through at, from delivery uh, and pushing back the delivery details into, into Bright Pearl, allowing you to understand right, right what's going on from really from order to delivery process. And this type of um, this type of experience is expected now because the big players, and, and Scott mentioned this as well, the big players like Amazon and Apple give that type of service to the customers. So customers ex expect it and demand it uh, from from their retailers. So this truly allows retailers to play at uh, at, at that level. Kieran, you can click on to the next screen there. Um, I just want to quickly show you the user interface, very complementary to what. Bright Pearl, it's very easy to use. The uh, orders come in, they're allocated automatically, and you simply do exactly the same as uh, what, uh, what Kieran was showing, is you can just batch print. So you can click on the, um, you can click on the icons, you can bundle together you know, whatever type of batch of, uh, of uh, um, deliveries that you required, and then you um, deliver, um, you just literally hit it and it prints off, and they, and they print off on, on the printer. And if you click on to the next one then, uh, Kieran. Um, so the shipment rules, um, there's simple rules which can be based on weight, postcode, country, item value, and any other attributes. And you can have multiple uh, combinations of those rules to give you much more complex action, uh, actions, which would be like if the goods are this weight and are going to this particular country, then use this carrier. Uh, if this um, item is of a particular value, then always use this carrier. And these kind of rules help uh, businesses to provide the type of service that the customers ex expect. And if you click on to the next one. So the documentation, I mentioned it in the, um, in the process flow. Basically, you can use the one printer for all your different carriers. No such thing anymore of having multiple um, printers on the, um, on, on the pack bench. One printer, all your labels come out into one size for each of the different uh, carriers. And we sort all that out. We, we, design, we have the labels designed, we get the labels approved, uh, the labels just need to be printed off, plugged in and printed off through your, through your printer. And the printer, many, we, the, um, many different co printers compatible for, uh, the, um, for, for the labels. Also the commercial invoices where necessary for international uh, shipments are created automatically and uh, produced. So if you click on the next one, Karen. So we had mentioned um, previously um, about you know scaling businesses and for one of our, our, our case study customers, we do, who are also a, a, our Bright Pearl customer, um, they had a problem with scaling their business because of the complexity of their operations. They had about 70 different warehouses and the warehouses were actually the suppliers that were shipping their goods. The way we do operate is they ship directly from their supplier rather than bringing their goods to the warehouse. 
And they were spending about six hours a day um, creating labels for each of these different uh, warehouses. So they had to log into about 100 different accounts every day to set up the consignments, and it uh, took about six hours for three or four people to actually to, to do that. Extremely time consuming in terms of uh, customer service. And with Scurry, we, and if you can flick on to the next page, Karen, um, we simplified the process using um, the Scurry uh, Magento uh, and Bright Parallel stack. So basically what happens is the orders are created in, in Magento, come through to Bright Pearl, allocated in Scurry through multiple warehouses. We have 70 different warehouses. And uh, then each of the uh, separate carriers, uh, Tufnels in this case, Panther and XDP, uh, labels are created on site, allowing the um, allowing the carrier to uh, collect the goods from 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 the location and minimizing the actual administration effort that had taken to deliver the, and uh, create the documentation for delivery of the goods. So I kind of rapidly run through that, uh, Kieran, um, just on the basis of trying to catch up. Uh, one thing I just did want to mention, uh, and yeah, you can flick on to the next one, is uh, for anyone that's interested, uh, we have a um, Scurry uh, promo um, uh, where you can receive up to 25% off your monthly subscription for anybody that we sign up before Christmas, and that would uh, equate for our shipments uh, that would occur, uh, or for subscriptions up until the end of January. So just cheaply uh, uh, put that in. Anyone wants to um, uh, avail of that, they can email me at uh, roryoconnor at scurry.com or my Twitter handle is at RTO Connor. We'll be sending out, I believe, a, a follow-up email just to, uh, to give everybody the details. Brilliant. Thank, thanks so much, Roy. That was a, a really good insight into you know, why, first of all, we, we chose to partner with each other and, and really how to, how to address those, those problems, um, particularly around Christmas when you have to you know, get so many orders out the door. And it's really important to be able to have a system that can seamlessly, you know, process those orders, get the labels to the correct couriers, you know, nice, easy-to-use interface so you can really um, respond in a positive way to your customer base and, and provide that level of customer service that really helps you go from, from being a, a good retailer to being an absolute great retailer that people start to really refer to their friends and uh, their families and, uh, and their colleagues. So, Rory, thanks so much for that. We, we have a few questions, Rory, so please do stay on the line. Don't, don't jump off, because some of these I probably can't answer. <laughs> um, we um, we have a few questions that have come in from, from our audience, so guys, we'll, we'll spend some time going through them. And I do appreciate that we have slightly overrun on our promise. Um, but if you're okay to stick stick on, guys, we're, we're okay to stick with it and answer the questions that you have. So the first question we have, guys, comes in from Niraj. Um, and Niraj asks, um, what, um, where does the total package weight uh, and size, where is that picked up for shipment? And the second part of that question is, CN22 and CN23, are they printed on the same label printer, um, which is easily put in the package, or is it just put on plain paper? So, Rory, I think this one will go to your side of the house. So the first question is, where do we pick up the total package weight and size for shipment? Hi, everyone. I'm Darren. I'm the product manager for Scurry. I can answer that. Um, the first question, the total weight, is based on a combination of the item weights. So it will um, sum up the total of the item weights. You can subsequently edit the overall consignment weight if you want to change that. Or you can configure Scurry to provide defaults. So in the event that you didn't have individual item weights, you can have Scurry um, just say, in every instance, unless I tell you otherwise, the weight of my packages is generally X, Y, Z. The second question, CN22, CN23s, they're automatically printed by Scurry. The CN22 can be configured to be printed on an A4 or thermal label, uh, depending on your environment setup, and the CN23 prints automatically on an A4. And our system will automatically pick up when it's required, so you don't need to explicitly ask for it, but you can. Our system will notice it's an international outside EU consignment and, and provide you with the CN22 or CN23, depending on the value of the consignment. Excellent. Thanks, Darren, for that question. And Nira, it's just to, to let us know that, that that has answered your question. 
if you want to explore that in any more detail, Neeraj, we're more than happy to, to organize a one-to-one -one session to, to go through the specifics in a little bit more detail. Um, so next question comes from James Cutler, and James would like to know, would I need to log into the Scurry user interface to process the shipments? And also, James... You would indeed, yes. Excellent. And he just popped up, Darren, another question that says, how do we tie up with batch good notes and scurry shipping labels? So how, how do we t attach, how do we associate the label with the, the goods and outs note itself, or the shipment itself? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a great question. There's a couple of ways of doing that where the challenge is reconciling the label to the order that you're packing. Um, it depends on how, how packing is done. If you're at a pack bench and using barcode scanners, our interface allows you to scan the, uh, the order being packed, and that will bring back and scurry the order to print. On the other hand, if you're batch uh, processing orders in one go, you can batch filter consignments or shipments and scurry at the same time. So you could filter by all of my Royal Mail consignments. And, and perhaps multi-line orders and, and, and whatever other conditions you've batched by so that the process of printing reflects the, the process of packing at the bench so it matches up with the way you're printing orders. And, and Darren, just to sort of add that, so they should be ordered you know, in the same way essentially? Correct, exactly Excellent. right. Excellent. And just, just sort of an update to the Brightpool customers and, and, and prospects and, and everyone on the audience today, every audience member. Brightpool, we've actually opened up uh, the ability to, to paste back in the label uh, URI uh, back into the goods note itself. So that's something we've opened up and we hope to explore with Scurry to even further tighten that integration so that you actually, it'll, it'll tie it up for you um, essentially. So looking forward to that. So next question from, from Niraj is, uh, do bundle items uh, details flow to Scurry, or is it only the main SKU? Um, yes, bundled, bundled items and components do will be passed as product information into Scurry. Um, Kate has asked, we don't create goods out notes. Um, how would the orders we want uh, to send to Scurry, uh, sorry, how, how would the orders we want to send uh, to the courier get in, into Scurry? Um, Kit, I would love you to elaborate on that, if you could just say the reason why you don't produce uh, shipments at the moment, um, because the way the integration works is it, it actually passes the, the goods out note into Scurry, and then Scurry take it from then on in. I would imagine if you don't produce goods out notes, you would have to get that into Scurry in a different way, but um, please just let me know, elaborate on that, because I think I maybe picked it up the wrong way. Um, is Interlink supported through Scurry, as it wasn't listed, and what happens for carriers which aren't already supported are you always adding new ones? So that's really a talk to the Scurry product roadmap. Um, so uh, Darren, would you like to pick that one up as well? Sure. Yes, we, um, we, we don't yet have Interlink. Uh, we do have DPD. We are adding Interlink. It's on our roadmap. And, and we're constantly adding more carriers uh, all the time. And it, it really, uh, we prioritize based on customer demand. Excellent. And, and another, just to sort of wrap up, the, the, another UK meal, uh, sorry, UK meal, is that currently in your, your radar as well? That's correct, it is, yes. We're adding about three or four carriers a month at the moment. So yes, UK mail and Interlink are both on our roadmap to be done in the next few months. Yeah. And Dave asked, will Royal Mail be added soon? I believe Royal Mail has just been added as well. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. All of Royal Mail's services, parcels, letters, uh, are added to Scurry. Excellent. That's, that's really brilliant news. Um, so just to, um, uh, James asked as well, when will Brightpool 4.73 with batch goods notes go live? I think we've actually just released 4.73. Yeah, 4.73 is pretty imminent. Either um, probably this week or next week, uh, I reckon you'll have it um, upgraded, James. Um, it's actually, there's a lot of efficiencies in terms of our push to really mature the product and raise the ceiling when it comes to, to those batch processes. Um, so Kate's just clarified, um, you print the orders from our ready to ship page. Um, okay, the goods note's not applicable to the way you do warehousing. Um, I, Kate, a one-to-one -one session on how we can integrate, I'll happily um, have that call with you. So if you just want to send me a tweet at IamKush or send me an email at kieran.kushley at 
the details are on your screen. I'll happily have a one-to-one -one session with you. Um, so another another question, a uh, really good question, is um, how would Scurry manage at the end of day? I think, Dave, do you mean the shipping manifest and the when the couriers actually come to pick it up? I'll, I'll just add my little flavor to that question. So, Darren, the question is, how would Scurry help me manage my end of day with, with the carriers themselves? Sure. Um, you manage that through Scurry. How we do that is uh, the process remains the same regardless of the courier that you're generating end of day forms. So in Scurry you can configure to manifest everything or, or some of your shipments as you might not want all of them picked up. And behind the scenes then we send all the data to the relevant couriers and the structure that they require. Um, so it's all done through Scurry. There's no um, there's no exceptions to that process. It's a very consistent process regardless of the carrier that you're generating end of day forms for. Um, and those end of day forms stay in Scurry so you can go back and get historical uh, manifest or end of day forms if required. Excellent. Excellent guys. We've got actually more, more questions that we know what to do with. So what we'll actually do is we'll spend some time to, to formalize these responses and send them out to to the, the, the audience that's attended today. Um, so guys, what, what I'd like to do is we've just hit the 5 o'clock, sort of 5.02, so I'd like to actually wrap, wrap up the webinar at this point and actually just say thank you for, for all of your brilliant questions. Um, and it was a really engaging part, part of the presentation and um, actually would really like you to get, provide feedback to us as well on the, the format of the webinar um, in terms of did you find it engaging, what would you like to see uh, for the next webinar, so maybe a topic that's close to your heart that we feel, you know, Bright Pearl or Scurry could address, or even Bright Pearl and one of our other partners could address. Um, so guys, just to summarize, I'd, I'd also like to thank um, Scott for his time and his, sort of his walkthrough of his experience and, and really the, the problems that he experienced with, with Kitty Care and how he addressed those problems by, by using technology and being on the front foot when it came to, to efficiently running his business. I'd also like to send a thanks to our other panelists, Rory, uh, Rory O'Connor and Darren from Scurry for really just showing us um, how we can take a, a, a multi-carrier management platform such as Scurry and really start to intelligently select the right carrier service based on, on the route and package and also how Scurry can give retailers that powerful data and analytics that because you've got a unified tracking system, um, it allows you to really have that one place so you're not jumping from system to system. And guys, in terms of the, the, the Bright Pearl um, team here, we hope that our current customers who are, who are obviously getting the efficiencies from inventory management and being able to update your channels and processing their orders and, and obviously doing their accounts and CRM, that they're truly benefiting from the system. And any of you who, who don't use Bright Pearl who would even be interested in having a conversation about it, please feel free to just get in touch. We can take you through any questions that you maybe had about, about our platform or the Scurry platform, and we're happy to have a product specialist you know, sit down with you and, and have that dedicated session. So guys, I hope it's been enjoyable, um, and we will we'll let you go and, and head home for the day, and uh, we hope that you'll attend uh, other webinars in our series. So thanks very much. <laughs>